What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and this video is going to be so freaking hyped because it's time to talk about a Sega Dreamcast Mini. And yes, this seems to be absolutely real, which is that Sega themselves has started to talk about their next major project, and they realized that doing a Dreamcast Mini could earn a ton of money because there are just so many hardcore Dreamcast fans, and people like maybe you who would just try it out because they never had a chance to sit down with the Dreamcast cast before. Now I'm excited about this and what we're going to be doing today is counting down what I think are the seven games that are absolutely mandatory for this system. And it's hard to narrow it down to seven, which is why I chose just such a random number, because I am obsessed with the Dreamcast. You may not know this, but I own and have played every single Dreamcast game. I own tons of different controllers. I even track down a bunch of the strategy guides and stuff just so I can see like different interpretations of the art. The Dreamcast, in my opinion, is the best system ever, but when I'm thinking about a micro version of the system, I think that the key is to try and find experiences that haven't left the console yet. So while it is true that we could put something like Shinmu on there, I think that it'd be best if we put something completely different. Games like Jet Set Radio. Sega in the 90s was definitely famous for a lot of stuff, but something I think they did best is that they practically created their own genres for a lot of games, and Jet Set Radio is definitely a beast all unto itself. It's like a grinding trick game with a crazy storyline and one of the best soundtracks of any experience ever released. It is just so banging from wall to wall, and it's one of those games that I think people have been clamoring to come back in some form. Now, I'm a big fan of Jet Set Radio Future, the sequel we got, but the original Jet Grind Radio is a game that is so good and really deserves to come back. Which also brings me to something that I've seen a lot of people talking about recently, which is of course the original Sonic Adventure. This is the European box art for it, and Sonic Adventure has aged exceptionally well. There are a couple levels that are a bit glitchy, but when it comes to the era of like 3D Sonic, this still remains to be one of the best and I think that people would get a chance to appreciate it more for what it was trying to do because there are games that are better than this. I'm not going to say that Sonic Adventure is the best Sonic of all time, but I feel like it was one of the first games that really kind of understood what the blue blur was supposed to be doing. Now's one that's definitely the most obvious choice, and if I had to be honest, this is probably my favorite Dreamcast game of all time, which is Skies of Arcadia. This is a huge RPG that has airships, multiple combat systems, crazy upgrades, and it also brings me to a secondary point about what I hope the Dreamcast Mini has. I hope there is some sort of online functionality, because there was some on-disc DLC for Skies of Arcadia back in the day. You had to at least connect connect to Seganet at least once in order to unlock the character's ultimate weapons. So if we're getting the Dreamcast Mini, it either needs to have some sort of online capabilities to maybe buy and play games online, or it needs to have the DLC all unlocked right at the start. Which kind of brings me to something else that I'd really, really love to see, which is, of course, Power Stone, baby! Uh, okay, so in all the games I play, of course, I name myself Dreamcast Guy, and a lot of people have no idea who I am. Like, obviously, I'm a tiny YouTuber, but it's funny because people see the name Dreamcast and they want to talk to me about it. So a lot of times I'll be playing, like, World of Warcraft or, like, like Final Fantasy XIV, and people walk up and almost always they say, Hell yeah, Power Stone. This is such an iconic brawler, and one that's just so freaking fun even today. I truly believe that this is something that kind of established the groundwork for great games like Super Smash Brothers. Like, Super Smash Brothers did things better and bigger, uh, obviously the first Smash Brothers came out before even this, but I think that this managed to do some 3D fun action and crazy power-ups to such a superb degree. Now I've got a game that's probably going to throw you for a loop because there's a good chance you've never heard of it, but I wish you had, and I've always said that part of the reason these micro consoles are important is because not only are they going to sell a bunch of systems, but they're also there to try and introduce a new audience to classics, right? Like, you may not notice it, but in my background I have the, uh, the PlayStation Mini. I think the PlayStation Mini, for how bad that thing sucks, at least it introduced a bunch of people to more obscure, great, classic PlayStation games. 
Wars. And that's why I believe that Record of the Lotus War absolutely deserves a spot on a Dreamcast Mini. It's basically like a single player only Diablo style game with isometric brawling, lots of cool weapon upgrades, and a lot of stuff that to this day I think is still exceptionally fun. And uh, something about this game is that it has really good visuals, it already looks really great, but I want to see it with an upscaling. I want to see it, you know, get that fresh coat of paint via putting it on a system that has HDMI out. It's a game that's still good, and I think people are going to appreciate it. Of course, just like... Resident Evil Code Veronica. I don't care how many people try and hate on this game, it is a masterpiece. I'm going to defend this to the day I die. I still believe that this is perhaps one of the most refined of the old school Resident Evils. Yes, it has tank controls. Yes, the bosses and storyline are a little bit weird and outdated, but God dang, do I love how freaking fun this game is. It's just so great to blast zombies and unlock crazy weapons and stuff. And additionally, the Dreamcast version of this game specifically is slightly different from the other ports. There are a couple scenes that have been tweaked, which is why when they released it on the PlayStation 2, they had to call it the Code Veronica X. The original Code Veronica is so freaking good, and I absolutely want to see it come back. If nothing else, they should put one of the Resident Evils on this system. Like, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, those also came to the Dreamcast, and those are really exceptional versions, but this is the one that I think kind of exemplifies the perfection of the Dreamcast. Now, my final game is one that's definitely very obvious, which is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I mean, come on, what's not to love? 52 characters, lots of crazy combos, three fighters in the arena at once. This game is stellar, and what's interesting to me is that the tournament scene for this is still rather lively. People are still playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to this day. That's a big testament to just how great the game is, but also just how much that specific version is just so loved. Technically, you could play this on other systems. There was like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Xbox and the PlayStation 2, but it's definitely perfected. It's definitely the most refined and polished when it comes to the Dreamcast version. And if it comes back, I mean, people are going to be buying the Dreamcast Mini, lining up to get one, even if it is just to practice that next big tournament for Marvel vs. Capcom 2. All these systems are going to be good. I I'm just, whatever they pick, I'm sure is going to be good. It's still just crazy to me that this might actually exist and relatively soon. Now, I'm going to finally tell you guys a secret. I heard about this about two years ago. About two years ago, before the uh, Sega Genesis Mini came out, I talked to some sources that were like Sega related, and they basically said the words, Sega wants to do the Dreamcast Mini, but they're not sure how. And basically what they were telling me is that they wanted to do this for a while, but they wanted to wait until the technology was perfected. They wanted to make sure that they could do this in a way that would respect the fans, it would respect these great games, and it'd be just so good to freaking sit down and play it. I mean, I'm still just so hyped. If we get this in 2021, I'm going to absolutely lose my mind. And I mean, uh, maybe... Uh, but I guess now we just have to wait and see. How about you? Are you excited for the Dreamcast Mini? Are you excited? How about you? Are you excited? How about you? Are you excited for the Dreamcast Mini? Do you think that this is just something that's too good to be true? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Oh my god, it feels good to wear a Shinmu shirt. It feels good to chill out with Shinmu. You know, I, I I can't put eight on here because I put seven in the title, but if I could put an eighth game, I'd absolutely put Shinmu. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.